years of martial arts stories. So this story I want to tell you about now is a continuing. I was still on Okinawa in 74, 75. I believe this was probably, this was 75. So now I'm 19 years old. I'm about 140. I'm going through a lot of sparring with Okinawans. I'm introduced to jailhouse boxing. I've dealt with the Okinawan champions. I've been humbled, I've been invigorated, I'm continuing, and I'm obsessed with my training. I continue to train every day. I'm also obsessed with hanging out with my, my people. We're, we're going out in town and basically raising hell on Okinawa in 1974. For those who didn't know, I'm not going to go into too many details with that, but we were doing that in Okinawa. A lot of us, uh, we had a crew from uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Chicago. Jersey, Philly. Uh, we had the whole basically East Coast represented, and I was California. Um, I gravitated my, my main people was uh, Chicago and New York. So I got a lot from my man from uh, Queens with the Jailhouse Box uh, influence there. So the, anyway, we had a, a, a crew, all, all the blacks that were in this particular motor pool, which was where I worked. This did not look well with the, those in authority, the sergeants and uh, officers that were above us. So by, by now, I'm kind of one of the leaders uh, of, of the set that, that I'm, I'm rolling with. So I'm at uh, a formation and getting ready to go home. I, I, I'd already had some trouble with the authorities, so I had what's called office hours, which is like an offense. It's almost tantamount to having a criminal offense in the civilian world. So I had some, some days that I wouldn't get paid, I'd be fined, or I'd have to do extra work, and things like that. So I my reputation was not good with the authorities, it was good with the people, but the authorities, not so much. So I just gave you all that to give you this next scene, because I actually had a fight, a real fight, with a master sergeant, which of course could have gotten me disarmed or discharged or put in the brig for five years. But fortunately, you know, God was on my side, it didn't happen. So here's the situation. I'm in the motor pool and I've got this chain on that was one of our symbols for, for our crew. And uh, he says, uh, the, the, the master sergeant looked at me and said, take that goddamn chain off. And that's how they talk this back then. I said, all right, I'll take it off. And I took it off and put it in my pocket. He said, give it to me. And I said, no, I can't give him this chain. And I looked at my man's school. And the South Carolina boy said, I can't give him this chain. And he said, no, nah, don't give it to me. I said, no, nah, I can't give him this chain. And you know, that was like real blasphemy at that time to be talking like that to uh, a master son. So he's like, oh, you're disobeying the law. And I said, no, nah, I got it. It's in my pocket. I'm just not going to give you the chain. You know, we're going back and forth. So he said, well, you know, come, come on in the office. We're going to get a cheap here and get you sent to the rig. I'm tired of your ass. And so he's like in a tight top of long pole. Top, if you see this, get at me. <laughs> anyway, top of long pole. I don't even know his first name. A long pole is Italian from New York. So he says, we go in the office. He calls the major, who also knew me and was ready to put me in a rig, uh, and says, I need to send a, a jeep down here for Tim. He's going to the brig. He just disobeyed our uh, order. And he's like, yeah, he told me he was going he told me he was going to kill me. And you know, I didn't say that. So what I said to him is, um, you, you are offended by me because I'm black. But when you die, all you see is black. So I said, some, you know, there was some of the shit that I was on during that particular time. And he said, oh, he told me when it got dark outside, he was going to kill me. You all heard it, right? And everybody is yes man around. They said yes. So he called the uh, major and said, send a jeep for this guy to go to the brig. He just 
straightened my life. And I just said, you know, you, you're, you're a liar. I didn't threaten your life. I just sort of told you that you would see uh, blackness when you die. And he said, yeah, well, whatever. You're going to the grid. So we went to went into his office, and he's making the phone call. And as he hangs up the phone, he said, yeah, we're going to get rid of your ass. And I said, that's OK, because when you die, you're going to see the black. He ran around his desk and went to, to push it, but I faded out from the push, and he kind of went, lost his balance, and then I pushed him, and he slammed up against me. Even though he was big, he was about 5'10", about, about two, 200 pounds as well. He slammed up against his desk, and made, made and everybody was looking at him. He said, everybody out of the office, okay, you're a tough guy. Everybody get out. And I'm like, oh, shit. I'm in here with this big guy, and I got to fight him. And so I, 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 it just escalated before I could really think. And my you know, 19 and spent, spent the previous night you know, drinking and doing other things. So anyway, as he goes against the desk, he gets everybody out. And he, he comes rushing at me. I just start drilling him. And, and he just tackles me, slams me onto the desk. And, 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 and I, I, I roll out with my feet. I, kind of, I had combat boots on, kicked him in the side of his head. He run, he's running just like a football player, attacking, got me up, up against the wall, and I caught him with my finger in his eye. And I, I, I started to just, I knew, if, I, in a split second, I thought, if I do this, I will go to the grave for sure, because he's going to be blinded. This was in his eye, almost up to the first, you know, fingernail. So I just, I changed my grip. And took, put my, my thumb in his nose. I said, but I'm going to rip his nose. His nose will be ripped. I just give him a few stitches. This is all within less than a second. So I'm pulling it out. So anyway, he had to get me out of the headlock as he let me out. I'm drilling him again with these punches. I, I, I tried to kick him. He slammed me up on the desk again. He hit me in the head with this, uh, a stapler. Boom! He hit me in the head with a stapler. And I, 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 I fell on the ground and grabbed an ashtray off the desk. And he's, he's rushing at me. He's still rushing at me. And I slammed the ashtray on his, uh, on his head, smashed, shattered. He stumbled, but they were still coming. So by then, all this noise going on. And people are outside. So they, they come. They, 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 no, no, they haven't come in yet. So he's like, he's like, after I slammed him with the ashtray, he got me on the ground and, and had his hands around me. He had me. He had me. I was done. He's sitting on, on my, his knees are on my shoulder and his hands are on my neck. He says, I'll kill you, little motherfucker. I'll kill you right now. I said, go ahead. When you die. And I couldn't even, when you die, he still sitting back there. He's like, ah. He said, listen, he didn't really want to kill me. I mean, he'd have gone to the grave for killing me. So he was like, listen, I respect you for fighting. And I'm going to let you up. Don't do any more. It's enough. That's enough. And so I said, uh, I said, he said, you understand? I just didn't say anything. Because I'm still, I'm 19, I'm blood. I'm, I'm still ready to fight. So he's like, let you up. He's done. He's about 35, 37, 38. So he's, he let me up, and, and then went around his desk. I was trying to go around his desk. He let me up. When he let me up, I drilled him again. Bang, bang, bang. Get hit him with a four piece. Bang, bang. He ran around his desk. Picked up an axe hammer, and I sweat it up, just like in the movies. Came up with that axe hammer, and just like a Bruce Lee, I caught my man. Pow! Hit that axe hammer. Went up into the light, and the light shattered. Fluorescent light shattered all over the floor. People rushed in there. I said, mind you, this took like, you know, three, four minutes, four, three, four, five minutes of all that noise going on. So all they heard was this noise. So they rushed in. He's like, just calm down. God damn it, I told you, I respect you. I don't need your respect. He's like, look, you're not going to the grid. Just calm down. So when he said that, I realized he's going to give me a pass. So I said, let me just, let me calm down. He said, I'm going to call. So he called the major. He said, major, I, I, 
misunderstood Tenny. You don't need to send a brick a, a, a key. He's not going to the brick. I just misunderstood him. So the major's like, what? I'm pop right in there. They were going back and forth. He said, no, he just was, you know, New York Italian. He like, no, I just, you know, I, I, I misunderstood what he said. He's okay. He's not going to. So now I'm like, I love this man. You know, he just got, because I, I figured my life was over. I'm like going to the brig. I'm going to get a dishonor with this job. So anyway, he said, he said, no, nah, I misunderstood. And uh, so then we're, you know, I'm just, I'm not saying anything now. I'm, now, mind you, I got blood on my head. The Hebrew, the state, all of my, my utilities, that's the uniform we wear. He's got like, a, a fat lip and purple, you know, eyes. And, you know, he's swelling. Uh, so we both look like we've been in the fight. And the office is a complete wreck. So we standing in there, he, he called the major, got these other people out. He's telling me, you know, he respects me, and you know, he was done after two minutes, but you know, you you're 19, I'm 38, you're full of vinegar, piss and vinegar. So, but I do respect you for fighting me. I thought you was just an all mouth. You, I respect that. You fought me and you know, you're a man and I respect you. I said, thanks, Bob, I appreciate that. And, Talked and <clears throat> now he shares the office with another New York Italian officer. So he's the top, the master sergeant. Then he had what's called a warrant officer. And so that they were like in the business world, like managers. So this this other uh, officer walks in. He's another New York Italian. He looks, he comes in, looks at the office. Looks at me, now right, I got blood on my until I'm just standing at the top of at the desk and I'm right here. And he looks looks at Top, looks at me, he said, Top, what the hell happened here? And the top is like, oh uh, we were just uh, we were just in here talking and um, the light broke and the papers uh, fell off the desk when I got up. So he he says that to the officer. The officer looks at me. I just look out the window. I'm not saying nothing. So then I look back because I want to see what's going on. So he's looking at he's looking at Top. Top's looking at him. I guess they did some type of Italian communication, New York Italian communication. Because he was like, okay, okay, uh, well, um, why don't both of you clean up the office? He looks at me, I just look back at him and look out the window. I'm just gonna pick up what I came to get him. I'm going to leave, Tom. Why don't both of you then make sure you got my eye contact? And he said, both of you. Clean up the office. So we cleaned, me and Top cleaned up the office. And uh, from that day forward, me and Top was cool. He always, always made sure I got paid. Like you had to wait on line for your paycheck. Anytime I was in the line, he'd call me forward and get my paycheck first. And, you know, I gave him a lot of respect as well. Never gave him any more, you know, shit like that, because we respected each other after that, that, that fight. It was very, um, it could have, could have been bad, but uh, it, was, it, it was, it was, it was, ended up being a, a good fight, a great experience for me um, in terms of my, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat quest. Uh, that was a, uh, the, one of my major fights on Okinawa that I'd like to share. Uh, thanks again, 50 years of experience. Forward ever, backward never, and never forget.